Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you for having me here. It's, uh, I'm delighted uh, to be invited to Gusek, uh, which is just round the corner where I grew up on the other side of the, of the today's state border. Um, I was very um, inspired by what I've heard so far, very um, interesting uh, outlooks, uh, very vivid uh, impressions. Um, before I enter on, on my uh, more restricted subject, which is uh, focusing on Southeast Europe and even more concretely on the Western Balkans, let me um, uh, drop a few remarks on, on what I've heard. The rule of law is, is certainly what inspired um, or shaped political um, thinking and, and, and the decisions in my country. Uh, it's this notion of you cannot uh, allow um, uh, laws and, and principles to be uh, uh, neglected um, in, in, in a blatant way. And when we look at uh, refugee waves and we uh, grant asylum, um, just to recall uh, my own country uh, over the last decades, a uh, couple of decades since signing the in on the Geneva Convention, has been a recipient, a big recipient of a wave of refugees uh, from neighboring countries, which were people were politically persecuted. This one, Czechoslovakia, Poland, and then the war situation in Yugoslavia. Uh, so that is uh, absolutely uh, another thing, and, and everybody will understand it. The same is happening in, in Turkey now, when there are millions of, um, of refugees uh, fleeing a war situation next door. That's the normal thing. But it's, from there, it's a different thing, and this was easily explained by our political leader, the prime minister in the first place. It's not the same if you are, if you are from, uh, from any country in the world, uh, and. Uh, choosing kind of one particular state somewhere in Europe or in North America, that this is my, my country of destiny. There is no <laughs> obligation um, to, um, to accept that. So, uh, the, of course, the solution, as has been uh, taking shape in the discussions here, is to have uh, agreements, to have um, an orderly uh, way. Of course, you need trust, you need trust in an embassy in a foreign state. I think what is interesting, I'm only following that from the sidelines, it's not my immediate uh, field of activities, but what is happening at the moment between, uh, in discussion between uh, Germany and the Gambia is, is, is quite interesting. There is an uh, 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 um, intensifying effort to come to terms, to strike an agreement that the visits uh, from Germany to, uh, to Gambia and vice versa. Uh, the, the, the idea, I think, following it is vaguely, is to um, to allow for some orderly migration in that way, uh, making the the payment and the even the Turkey payment uh, obsolete or, or otherwise. So this is just an um, initial remark. But like the focus of what I would, uh, was going to say is uh, Southeast Europe, the Western Balkans in, in particular, and if we look at uh, this area, there are two distinct ways of, of migration over the last uh, year. One is, is this big migration wave that we are referred to going through the Balkans, the so-called uh, Balkan route. There is also the Central European route and the, the Hispanic, uh, the Western route. But uh, the most substantive and the most uh, politically uh, uh, significant one uh, was and is potentially uh, uh, using the same route that uh, the birds of migration used to get uh, to gain uh, uh, to reach uh, Africa and return back in spring to our part of the world. And you see the storks; they use the same route via like Bosporus to, uh, to reach um, the Nile and then further south. Uh, so, Balkans have been a, a place of, of transit, uh, through, mostly through Turkey and Greece uh, into Central Europe, Germany, Sweden. But, and this I would like to dwell on also, is the migration out of the uh, area, which is significant, which is not co co confined to Southeast Europe. All of Europe has had major uh, emigration waves over time. Uh, when you talk to a demographer, they will say, maybe France has not really had a massive outbreak. But even there, they have been the Huguenots, who Huguen but not as massive as practically every single country or area or region of 
of Europe that in, over time uh, suffered. This area here, uh, where we are, and on the other side of the world, there's this mass migration. You go to, uh, to Chicago, it will be the biggest uh, town of, of people of, uh, who have um, emigrated from, from more or less this, this area uh, here. Or uh, against Cleveland for people. <laughs> um, now, uh, this focusing uh, a little bit on the um, um, big movement of 2015 and 16. Uh, there were, just to re recall, there were two uh, maybe decisive uh, factors to uh, stop this, this constant flow. Uh, it was the cooperation of uh, West Balkan countries, in, uh, that they sort of started to um, uh, build up a serious uh, border controls and, and walls, and, and incidentally, it was then Macedonia, today's new uh, northern Macedonia, uh, on their border to Greece, which was a focal point and which agreed to fully cooperate with the European Union uh, and to, uh, to, to squell this flow of. of Migration. And of course, the agreement reached between the European Union and Turkey uh, is the, the other uh, cornerstone um, that helps to, uh, to, to reach a situation which is um, the one that we have now, which is not perfect, but uh, which is uh, quite different from the rather chaotic and, and, and ruleless situation that we had had in 2015-16. Uh, It, this this uh, cooperation gave rise to uh, intense communication between the European Union and the countries of the Western Balkans. I mentioned North Macedonia, but all other countries are also uh, implied. Uh, Bosnia Herzegovina was mentioned, uh, and the focus on, on, on Bosnia Herzegovina. There, you, of course, you have a very um, unusual situation where you have uh, board, borders, I should say. With the, towards the east and south, uh, which are hardly can <coughs> be considered as, as a border, because I think that the controls of Bulgaria from Serbia to Bosnia Herzegovina is not very, not very intense to put it very, very mildly. Uh, and of course, then you have the, uh, the knock-on effect. Cooperation with uh, partners in the Western Balkans between European Union and, and them has uh, increased uh, immediately. Uh, there was the risk analysis networks where most of them uh, cooperated. In the meantime, <coughs> status agreements have been signed. Albania was the first country where such an agreement entered into force. Frontex can uh, co uh, operate there. Uh, we think this is a, a very good and positive move and it certainly made also up for a lot of trust building between uh, um, the countries aspiring to become members of the European Union and the European Union itself. One focus now on the emigration, the migration out of uh, the area. Uh, I, will, uh, I will focus on, on, on Southeast Europe. It could be also interesting to look at places like the Baltics or, um, or uh, Romania or uh, Bulgaria, of course, where Bulgaria is the strongest uh, drain on the population, not only brain, brain drain, but also um, uh, an overall drain. But since the um, subject matter, or the title of um, this morning session is the implication on um, institutions, uh, let me uh, focus on this. The institutional uh, implications of the ongoing migration from Southeast Europe uh, are, are uh, wide and, and deep. There are some who speak of catastrophic dimensions. I think Judah, who is an expert, uh, John Johnson's uh, writer, uh, speaks of that. The uh, Pope, when he visited, I think when he visited India, he mentioned, uh, he spoke of the demographic winter that is coming over this, or threatening uh, this part of Europe, uh, whereby um, Immigration, uh, very low birth rates, uh, combined to make uh, make for empty uh, landscapes. Um, this has a number of knock-on effects. Um, they are manifold. From the point of view of the EU members and investors, there they see that the markets are shrinking. There are no <coughs> people there. There is. Um, a labor shortage, uh, funnily enough. Uh, there is 
is uh, all uh, qualified, no, many qualified people just leave the country. Not only doctors, but even manual workers who have some qualifications, they end up um, in our places, which is from a, is good in, a, in, in on the one hand, but a short term. It's not net, it's not healthy. It's not a sustainable, um, healthy uh, relationship. Um, the market is shrinking. Labor market is shrinking. Um, there is a potential role for immigrants and uh, refugees to fill the void that is there, which is the most natural thing to happen. We had this situation here uh, in, in, in uh, what then was Western Hungary when after the Turks uh, had uh, invaded and left, there were villages empty and uh, Croats were brought from even from Dalmatia to fill the gaps and they're still there happily ever after and, and perfectly blended into the, the population. We have Sicilian villages where I hear that are practically empty and mayors <coughs> appealing to any immigrant, African, whatever, you can uh, choose to, to repopulate uh, the, uh, the places. Uh, um, Spain was mentioned, they had a program of bringing in uh, Hispanics from uh, granting citizenship and bringing in uh, people from Latin America in big numbers. There are millions from Ukraine going to Poland. So migration is going on and very often is filling the gaps, simply uh, speaking, which is nothing um, uh, bad per se, but of course it brings with it uh, political changes that can uh, create uh, frictions, tensions, and, and so forth. Uh, there is, um, with emigres, of course, the issue of the state elite, the allegiance to the original state, the right of vote. There are potent, there are political consequences for the countries that are being drained of a population. There will be a very often a, a rather old electorate st look, staying back, uh, normally rather conservative. Uh, and rather ready to uh, perpetuate uh, situations, political situations, which uh, put national rhetoric and national uh, feelings in, in the front. This is um, a thing that we have to, uh, it's easy to, uh, to see. On the other hand, of course, migrants uh, uh, also are a source of not only short-term remittances, but also uh, in the better case for uh, investments in the old home country, for coming back. We have seen it with India. Bangalore basically is uh, the result of uh, emigration to the United States and qualified uh, people returning and building up their own uh, microchip and, and uh, IT industry in India. Uh, so this theoretically could happen. We have seen that with Turkey. Uh, until um, a couple of years ago, maybe three, four years ago, we have had a uh, net uh, movement of people, of migrants from the Turkish origin migrants from Germany, or no, uh, from people from Germany to Turkey, more than Turkey to Germany. That, that has a, is a trend that set in in 1985 and lasted till uh, a couple of years back now with the political um, uh, changes. It, 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 you know, not anymore. But it can happen, these kind of things uh, can happen and they, um, they can be uh, quite beneficial. Uh, uh, I mentioned the old generation. Um, uh, so, uh, generally speaking, there are big chances and big opportunities and big uh, threats. Uh, I think it is wise to look at them uh, in, in a, a cool and a balanced way. Uh, it can be um, accompanied in a, in a beneficial way. The chances are there. Uh, and I hope that maybe uh, through discussing these things we can also find some new inspiring facts. There is a lot of international cooperation. Um, uh, European Union has been mentioned. Tomorrow I will be at the uh, Visegrad plus Austria, Slovenia, Croatia plus Western Balkan 6 foreign ministers meeting in Prague. Yeah. Many things. The Greeks, uh, they organized a, a meeting uh, only a few days ago in Thessaloniki. Austria is always um, uh, ready to do the uh, things like that, so there is a big conference in Budapest tomorrow. So we were working, we were wrecking our, our, our brains, uh, hopefully something will come out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.